fastest birds on Earth are under attack. And life never gets any easier. Danger comes at ostriches from all sides. They have to be tough right from the beginning. If they survive, the babies will become part of a bizarre world full of conflict and ritual. Under the sparse cover of brush in southern Kenya, East Africa, lion, giraffe, and zebra roam the plains. But these mammals are relative newcomers to this magnificent landscape. Fossils prove that one of the strangest birds in the world arrived here 12 million years ago. Wild ostriches can live to be 30 years old. They seem very much at home here. Exposed and unprotected, a mother ostrich warily scans the horizon. She has good reason to be nervous, with 12 eggs beginning to hatch. The eggs and emerging chicks are defenseless against predators. Hyenas, lions, jackals and snakes would all gladly make a meal out of this nest. The chicks have already spent nearly six weeks developing in their eggshell houses. It could take many more hours to peck their way out. The mother splits her time between guard duty and checkups on her chicks. Breaking through their thick shells is tough work. Although they already weigh two pounds, this first challenge of their young lives is critical but exhausting. They need to stop often to rest. Step one is to chip away at the shell with their tender beaks. Then, mustering all their strength, they use their sturdy little legs to push and kick their way free. Once they're out, the babies are very weak. The mother ostrich nervously stands watch over her young. The first thing chicks see is their mother's immense feet with two seven-inch toes topped by lethal four-inch claws. Her legs are covered with thick, scaly skin. She can use these remarkable limbs as incredible effective weapons. Ostriches can kick with ferocious power, strong enough to kill a lion. At seven feet tall, the ostrich mother is a perfect watchtower. Her chicks will need to grow more than three inches a week to reach her height in just over a year. These chicks are lucky to just be alive. 90% of ostrich nests are raided by predators, such as hyenas, baboons, and vultures, who eat the eggs. And once they hatch, only 15% of chicks survive to their first birthday. As soon as a few chicks have emerged, they begin checking out their environment. Like their mother, they're alert and cautious. These two brother and sister ostriches have just discovered they're not alone. They're starting to get to know each other. The babies are anxious to explore this new exciting place. They're only a few hours old. They'll need a little more rest before they're ready to take on the world. But there's no time to waste stuck in the nest. They're easy pickings for predators. They need to get on their feet as soon as possible. The father is just as protective of his family as his mate. He never strays far from the nest and his newborn chicks. 
The male ostrich's striking feathers make him more attractive to females, but he doesn't blend into the daylight environment very well. Females and chicks' plumage is more subdued and better for camouflage. After six weeks spent cramped in their eggs, movement is a big challenge for the chicks. Unlike most birds, ostriches don't need to learn to fly before leaving the nest. They just have to walk. Several yogurts are claiming to help with... Their bodies, two pounds heavy and already a foot tall, are awkward and clumsy. The smell of freshly hatched eggs could attract predators. But the newborn chicks have to stick close to the nest. For the first few days of life, their only source of food is vitalin, a nutritious substance in their egg yolks. The chicks peck at it, building up their strength. One little fellow still hasn't made it out of the egg. For him, time is running out. If the inside of the shell hardens, he'll be trapped and in great danger. The perfect helpless victim for a predator. Suddenly, he shows signs of life. Nearby, his siblings are making great progress. They're ready to explore. The last baby is still struggling to get out of his shell. He must join his brothers and sisters. Their hard at work, learning to walk, looking around, and trying to climb out of the nest. Just hours old, they already understand they need to get moving and study their environment. After a few false starts, the last chick eventually breaks free. The other babies watch the run to the family as he timidly emerges. They already have a jump start on life. This baby is going to have to play catch up. For ostriches, feathers aren't meant for flying, but they are useful for communicating, especially later during mating season. Adults have soft, downy plumage. The earthy brown color of the chicks helps them blend into the brown African savanna. But camouflage doesn't guarantee their safety, so the chick's parents stand guard, just in case. At age two weeks, the baby's feathers, not yet fully developed, are spiky, which will give them a little more protection. They've been eating constantly and have already grown nearly a foot taller. They look more like long-legged porcupines than ostriches. The family sticks close together at all times, ready to react at the first sign of danger. As they walk, the chicks become familiar with the other animals on the plains, such as these heartbucks. This is an important part of their education, learning which animals are dangerous and which aren't. Ostrich families walk dozens of miles every day in search of food. After the vitalin in their eggs is eaten up, the chicks have to hunt for food just like the adults. By watching their parents, the chicks learn to seek out and peck for tidbits. But just figuring out what is food and what isn't takes lots of practice. Ostriches have enormous eyes, almost two inches in diameter, 
and much bigger than their brains. Their vision is excellent. Even the chick's eyesight is far keener than a human's. Although ostriches will eat insects or lizards if they're hungry enough, they prefer plants, but the babies don't know that yet. This chick discovers that a gnu carcass is not very tasty. Suddenly, there's a stirring in the grass, and the male looks very nervous. The young ostriches sense that something is wrong. They're not safe out in the open, so they rush off to their mother. At first, the ostrich family doesn't know if the invisible intruder is friend or foe, but their father isn't going to wait to find out. He attacks, racing at 40 miles an hour towards a long-tailed mongoose. Close calls like this one will be repeated thousands of times. The mother is anxious and keeps an eye on her mate even after the danger has passed. The chicks have already learned to seek protection as soon as either one of their parents looks restless. Once their father calms down, the babies gather around him again. The mongoose is far enough away now that the family can relax for the moment. The ostriches go back to life as usual, although the chicks are still a little shaken. Their father keeps a sharp lookout, just in case the mongoose returns. The family sets off for a new area, with the mother leading the procession. The father ostrich brings up the rear. They're headed for a special place in the savanna where they can take a bath. But there isn't any water involved, just dust. This is a prized dusting location, and this isn't the only family who wants it. Mom and Dad may need to throw their weight around a little to let the bath crashers know who was here first. They don't intend to budge. Ostriches bathe in the dirt so they can get rid of ticks and other parasites. Besides that, it probably feels great. When a young female interloper comes a little too close for comfort, mom's bath is rudely interrupted. She rushes at her, but she and the challenger are closely matched. Whoever's willing to put up the longest fight will win. With so many legs around, the chances of one of the chicks getting hurt is too great. The parents decide to move on. There will be more places to bathe up ahead. As the ostrich clan goes further into the dry savanna, the chick's feathers begin to blend into the background. The edible shrubs serve as both camouflage and nourishment. Like most baby animals, the chicks learn what's good to eat by watching their parents. They set examples of behavior that will hopefully give their children the best chance of survival. The mother keeps an eye on a young warthog that's passing by. He doesn't seem the least bit nervous. His parents may be nearby. The chicks are sent scurrying to their mother, just in case. Sure enough, another much bigger warthog appears. He is potentially very dangerous. Usually vegetarian, warthogs will sometimes eat meat, especially if such a meal is easy to come by. The male will have to take some kind of action. The baby ostriches hide in the long grass, staying close to their mother. 
In a flash, the male charges the warthog, whose sharp tusks are no match for the ostrich's deadly kick. After the warthog is chased away, the chicks are free to rejoin their mother. Further ahead, the mother notices that a lion has also been watching them. She quietly investigates, tense and ready to flee. The lion doesn't seem too interested in having ostrich for dinner, but he still poses a threat. Just in case, the parents decide to move the family along. The chicks wisely follow their lead. The ostriches have lived to see the end of another day. And on the African plains, this is the ultimate success. The baby ostriches are now a year old and have grown to the size of their parents. But it will take another six months before they display their fully adult plumage. They are now tall enough, seven feet, to scan the landscape themselves and no longer rely so much on their parents for protection. These teenage ostriches can fend for themselves, but they still have a few things to learn. Mating will be the last lesson in their education. Although the young ostriches aren't dependent on their parents anymore, they won't leave the family group for another two years when they're ready to have children of their own. Each ostrich needs to eat seven pounds of vegetation daily. Since they also swallow stones for digestion, that means they cover a lot of ground with dead weight in their stomachs. Each day, the ostriches have to compete with other animals for food, like these vast herds of wildebeest. As the weather changes, the rainy season, with its abundant green grass and leafy shrubs, comes to an end. Now, in the dry season, many animals, including ostriches, must cover even greater distances to find food. Weaker animals will die of starvation and become food themselves for scavengers, such as these hyenas. Ostriches can go for long periods without water. While other animals must migrate hundreds of miles to find food, the ostriches can stay within their established territories. In fact, the dry season is a special time for them. It's the season for courtship and mating. This male has found a female to his liking, so he goes after her in hot pursuit. Although she's telling him she's ready to mate by her crouching posture and spread wings, She's happy to make him work to win her, and she's giving him quite a run for his money. This extended flirtation is one way she learns if he's a good enough mate for her. She wants the strongest, healthiest male to father her children. It could be hours before she finally agrees to mate with him, or she could reject him and wait for someone better to come along. Finally, the suitor gives up, while other females watch nearby. The male continues strutting around until he's ready to try his luck again. His neck has turned bright red, signaling his desire to mate. He won't give up until he lands a sweetheart. He approaches again, but his girlfriend pretends not to notice. She's busy grooming herself. The male knows he must persist, or another suitor could come by and tempt her. The female now begins her own performance, displaying her feathers in an effort to seduce the male. This is all part of the ritual. This is the ostrich mating dance. She starts moving, keeping her wings held down to attract his attention. Mm. 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 
He returns the gesture with his wings held up. Just when he thinks he has her, she trots off again. She's quite the tease. But the male persists. This time he puts on a spectacular show. With his feathers puffed out and his bright red neck swaying from side to side, he's proving how handsome and strong he is. It's meant to convince the female of how capable he is of fathering healthy baby ostriches. She can't help but turn and stare. Encouraged, the male keeps up his display, showing off his feathers to their best advantage. Finally, success. His performance has done the trick. When he sees that she's ready, the male wastes no time. He's on her in a flash, and they start mating. The male keeps up his dance the entire time. They may mate several more times to ensure his genes are present in the next generation. Actual mating only takes a few minutes, but the rituals of seduction can last for days. When it's over, the female wanders off alone. The male, meanwhile, is still ready for more. Although he'll ultimately stay and raise his young with one dominant female, he isn't monogamous. The breeding season lasts just a month, so he must take every opportunity to mate. The dominant female is usually older and more experienced. This female is young and flirtatious, but very available. When rival males want to mate with the same female, they beat their wings to try and scare each other. These flightless limbs are excellent weapons of intimidation during breeding season. When one female is being courted by two males, the atmosphere can get quite intense. This suitor's neck is red with passion. Besides visual displays, male ostriches also boom loudly to ward off other competitors. They're even willing to fight over their females, sometimes wounding each other badly with vicious swipes of their claws. One of the males does a very impressive seduction dance. But the female moves away. The other male follows, hoping he'll have better luck with her. She is still playing hard to get. The male, tired of her teasing, decides to look elsewhere. Seeing another female in the distance, he takes the opportunity to pursue her. This time, he's more successful. The female responds to his call and moves toward him. Pecking is all part of the game. So far, the seduction is going smoothly. But the male must be patient. He can't make his move until the female tells him she's ready. She indicates the moment has arrived. One last time, the male takes a minute to show off. The lovebirds are ready to mate. Although ostriches aren't faithful partners, 
Certain couples do stay together after mating. These are the dominant pairs, the strongest, healthiest males and females of the group. Once joined, they will remain with each other and prepare to raise their new family. The dominant female will allow a few lower ranking females to mate with her male, but she's the first one to be fertilized and lay her eggs. She is the queen of the nest. Tomorrow on an all-new Mutual of Omaha's... After the male chooses an appropriate spot, he prepares the nest by scraping the ground with his feet. The female lays her first egg about two weeks after mating. She will lay one egg every two days until she's produced up to a dozen. When there's an intruder, even a male looking for a female to mate, it's the dominant male's job to protect the nest and the eggs. Other lone females don't pose a threat. In fact, they are members of the family in a way. Up to four more females will drop their eggs in the nest, where the dominant couple willingly cares for them. Watching over her eggs is a full-time job for the primary ostrich mother. She rolls them over several times a day to stabilize their temperature and help all the embryos develop at the same pace. This egg turning process is what allows for synchronized hatching later on. Meanwhile, the father patrols and chases intruders away. The dominant female lays about twice as many eggs as the other mothers. She has a tough job to do. An ostrich egg is the largest bird egg in the world. But it's also the smallest egg in relation to the bird's size. This is what makes it possible for one ostrich to sit on more eggs than just her own. Female ostriches outnumber males by nearly 50%. So there are a lot of single mother ostriches who need nests to borrow. The dominant couple will care for all the eggs, but they'll also make sure their eggs are kept in the center of the nest, where they get the best protection. No one is sure how the ostriches are able to tell their eggs apart from the others. The dominant male is on alert again. There are other males in the area, and one of the females has settled down to lay her eggs, making her even more exposed to attack. She lays her eggs in the dominant couple's nest, but the father of her children is not this male. Still, he comes over to the nest to inspect the eggs. He's just as interested in their welfare as the females. In fact, the dominant male shares the duty of egg tending, so he takes his responsibility seriously. A new female appears. She wants to lay her eggs here, too. But before that's allowed, the dominant mother needs to remind her who's boss. She shows her superiority by spreading her wings. With the chain of command clear, the new female will soon be permitted to add her eggs to the growing nest. There are now three mothers and one father. Quite a crowded household. Strict hierarchy is required to keep the egg-laying process running smoothly and nest life harmonious. The newest female has been accepted into the ostrich clan. She is allowed to approach the nest. She walks cautiously toward the nest, while the male follows close behind, escorting her. These lower-ranking females actually have the easier job. They can lay their eggs and never worry about raising the chicks. Another female settles down near the dominant mother to start laying, knowing that her eggs will be in good hands. But just as she's about to begin, a fourth female shows up. Everyone is very upset. 
the dominant mother spreads her wings in a defensive posture to protect the eggs. But the intruder means no harm, so the newest mother settles down again to lay her eggs. Afterwards, right on cue, the rest of the group converges to inspect the nest. This extended family bickers and fights like any family, but they all do their best to ensure the safety of the eggs. They seem excited at the prospect of so many children. Once about 20 eggs have been laid in the nest, the secondary females will leave the dominant couple to take care of business. They have precious goods to protect, which need constant tending. It's vitally important to monitor the heat during daylight hours. If the eggs are not shaded by the mother and turned occasionally, they will get too hot and literally cook in the sun. But the female better not keep her head down for too long. There's danger afoot. It's a hyena. She senses his presence. He'd like nothing better than an ostrich omelet for breakfast. Luckily, her mate is nearby, playing bodyguard. So she can go back to the eggs. Each one is nearly six inches in diameter and weighs about three pounds, so rearranging them is hard labor. Still, she's nervous now and knows she needs to keep alert. Finally, she is satisfied that she can take a break. The incubating babies are safe again, for the moment. After all that work and stress, she and her mate decide to take a well-deserved stroll across the savanna. The couple is in search of fresh food, which is hard to find in the dry season. Everything seems peaceful, so the couple feels secure leaving the nest for a few minutes. Even devoted parents like ostriches have to leave the nest every once in a while. If they are to sustain six long weeks of brooding, they have to find nourishment. But disaster strikes. A family of baboons has discovered the nest and made off with one of the eggs. An egg of this size can provide them with a substantial meal. Baboons are intelligent animals. They eat both plants and meat and don't miss any opportunity for food. With young mouths to feed, the whole group is enthralled by the egg. Although this big male is less impressed. None of them seems to know the first thing about getting it open. Ostrich eggs are extremely tough. This one would need to be dropped from a good height or hit very hard to crack it open. The baboons are not the only ones interested in the egg. A vulture drops by, hoping to share in the leftovers. But the baboons are having none of it. They're not about to share this trophy. The vulture watches from a safe distance, but the baboon never does get the egg open. What looked like an easy meal is discarded. The tough shell protected this baby, but the egg is still doomed. 
it will never survive in the outside world. The ostrich couple is on their way back to the nest, oblivious to the attack. It's a good thing they've got a nest full of spare eggs. With so many eggs destroyed by predators, ostriches are biologically programmed to make up for the losses. They come back to discover two females laying eggs in the couple's nest. But these newcomers are tolerated like the others. The dominant pair goes about their regular nest duties while the latest female lays her eggs. For the moment, nest life seems cooperative and peaceful. Their new mother wants to relax after her strenuous egg laying session, but the dominant female steps in. She wants to make something clear. This is her nest. She uses her wings to express how strongly she feels. She leaves no doubt as to who will win this argument. Sure enough, the other two females get the message. Now the dominant female checks on all the eggs to make sure they're okay. She and her mate have got an impressive collection. 20 eggs so far. Everything looks good. It's time for brooding, or sitting on the eggs, to begin. Sitting on the eggs regulates their temperatures, so the chicks inside can begin to develop. Brooding cannot start full-time until the dominant female has finished laying all her eggs. The male takes the first shift. Brooding is not like napping, though. He will pass the first of many restless nights until the eggs are hatched. The dominant female goes off to feed, leaving her mate to brood alone. Males incubate at night because in the darkness their black plumage is less visible. At intervals throughout the night, he turns the eggs, just like his mate does during the daytime. In the morning, the female comes back to relieve her mate. She has eaten enough to sustain her through the day. She lets the male know it's her with her own distinctive signals. This ritual not only tells her mate it is her and not another ostrich, but also reaffirms their role as a dominant couple. The recognition ritual takes place every time the couple changes brooding shifts. In the daytime, the female's feathers are much better at blending in with the landscape. The couple are a perfectly matched brooding pair of light and dark. Before she sits down, she checks to make sure the eggs are okay. She also makes the most of her seven-foot frame to scan the horizon for danger. Now the male will need to feed all day to get ready for his night shift, while the female takes over brooding responsibilities. This exchange of duties will be faithfully executed every morning and night for six long weeks. The couple cannot fail each other. By now, all the secondary females have left the nest, so the survival of the next generation rests solely on the dominant pair's shoulders. The female broods, almost invisible, in the distance. Even if she cannot get every egg beneath her, she is assured that her own eggs are the most protected ones in the middle of the nest. The male spends the day intent on filling his stomach. By dusk, the female starts looking forward to his return. She is getting hungry now. The proud father does not let her down. He's on his way, right on schedule. Just before he reaches his mate, he does a territorial dance, letting everyone know he means business. 
No one had better come close to the nest site. When he's finished, he begins the next dance, the daily recognition ritual. At first, she doesn't respond. He's got to be more convincing. Now she knows it's him. Posturing to establish territory, to threaten attackers, and during brooding is a major means of communication among ostriches. After all, they do look pretty much alike. The only way they can be certain to recognize each other is to be visibly dramatic. That way, they can use their eyesight, by far their sharpest sense, to distinguish their mate from an imposter. Another round in the 24-hour brooding cycle has begun. Tonight on Groomer Has It, the groomers are about to face their big eggs, but most of them belong to the dominant female. Although she knows which eggs are hers, she and her mate will faithfully raise all the hatchlings, regardless of their parentage. After weeks of exhausting brooding, the couple still must stay committed. The babies will require nine more months of their undivided care and attention. Soon enough, the babies will grow up and take their place in the next elegant procession of flightless birds across the African savanna. They will join in their parents' strange rituals and fight for survival.